Relationship advice. Our baby has ruined our relationship. I'm hiding in the toilet in tears typing this, because I just can't continue like this anymore, I'm at the end of my tether. My fiancé, 25 male, and I, 21 female, had an amazing relationship before our baby came along. We never argued, every single day was filled with pure love and laughter, and fun. We never disagreed on anything. Neither of us believed in soulmates until we met each other. But since our wonderful baby boy was born, my fiancé has changed. His temper goes from 0 to 100 at literally anything. For example, this morning he blew up because his mum bought him the wrong type of shower gel, and he didn't feel clean enough. It's usually the most utterly ridiculous things to get upset over. And when he does blow his lid, he shouts and rants and swears and chucks things around the room like a child. I'm pretty sure he has the male version of postnatal depression and worst thing is that, all of the baby work falls on me, yet he still expects me to do the housework and gets angry when I don't. He's not even working right now. He never used to be like this, and it's breaking my heart, because it feels like I'm just watching our relationship go down the drain without being able to stop it. I want this to work so much. When he's calm, it's like we are back to normal and everything is perfect. But then I'm just waiting for the next time he explodes. I don't know what to do anymore. I keep telling him I should go stay at my parents for a couple weeks to let him relax and rest, but he won't have it, he doesn't want to be away from me. He has given up with seeking mental health support because he missed a couple of phone calls, so they left him alone, and he's refusing to persevere with it. No matter how much I tell him how wrong it is, how unhappy I am, that it's not fair on me or our son, it just won't get through to him. He will cry and apologize and be super kind to me the next day, then go back to normal. I just can't live like this anymore, in this horrible atmosphere, walking on eggshells all the time. I hate it. Especially as I have PTSD from a previous abusive relationship, and anger triggers it really badly. I just wish he would listen to me before I have to give him an ultimatum. Any advice? Now for the top advice. You need to go stay at your parents for a couple weeks to let yourself relax, and get some help with baby and get some sleep, and to get away from this man until, a. He gets some sleep, it could be that simple. Sleeplessness makes you psychotic, and, b, he gets some professional help with his mental health, do not compromise on that, he sees a mental health professional or this relationship is over. You cannot, must not, be with someone who refuses essential treatment that is affecting all three of you, and not just, I will get some, but, I have already done so. You need to prioritize your own mental health and the health and safety of baby, especially because he won't. You cannot spend another night in the house with him, he's unstable and harmful and potentially dangerous. This, OP, you could do with proper support and he needs to sort his crap out, or lose you. We never disagreed on anything. In my opinion, that is a red flag. It either means that you didn't have differing views, or one of you was not being 100% honest with the other person. But that isn't what the point of this post is. Neither is your baby. Your baby didn't do anything to the relationship. It's a baby. It's the way your boyfriend has changed. You shouldn't stay. You can't help someone who doesn't want to help themselves. Or they weren't in a relationship for long enough to heat everything. Before, them was perfect, sure, but for how long? For cohabiting for 10 years? I doubt it. You should sit him down, talk to him, and suggest therapy. Also, your baby isn't ruining your relationship, your fiancé is. Now for the next story. Found out I'm, 31 female, infertile, and worried husband wants a divorce. I'll make it quick before I break down mentally. I found out I'm infertile a few weeks back. Broke down, husband was always there for me physically, emotionally, and mentally. And now I'm almost positive he'll ask for a divorce. I've been off work most of this year due to COVID, so I spent most of the time being a housewife. My husband has been loving it and we have been wanting a kid. Me being home all the time kept him excited and we pretty much have had S every day, outside of when I'm on my period. Got tested last month and I found out I cannot have kids. My husband was there for me 100% the first few days, and he even took PTO days to just spend time with me and be supportive. As time went on, he became more distant and started to recently go to work. He's a low-level VP at his job, and his company only allows VPs or hire to go into the office due to the health issues. He hates going to work because it's an hour and a half drive without traffic, but recently he doesn't mind. He said COVID was the best thing to happen to his job, since he could stay home all day and spend time together, 
Apparently now it's okay. I went to clean up his work office and he had his hoodie on the floor, I was going to put it in with the laundry and cleaned out the pockets. I found a business card for a divorce attorney that was stapled to a piece of paper with additional contact numbers. I've been a mess the past couple days. I haven't told my family or my friends. My heart is trying to calm me, saying it's nothing to worry about, but my entire body is saying it's on me for being useless. My husband hasn't been as affectionate since he started to go back to work, so it leads me to believe this is really happening. Have any women been in a similar situation? How likely will I lose my husband and be forced to go back to my parents? Please am I just going overdrive stressing about something that I'm overblowing? I've never been so scared in my life. Now for the top advice. I found out I'm infertile a few weeks back. Sterile, or just infertile? Infertile doesn't mean you can't have children. Have any women been in a similar situation? I got diagnosed with a severe case of endo last year, and my doctor made it clear that getting pregnant naturally might be very tough. Hence, my significant other and I had plenty of discussions about hormone therapy, IVF and adoption. How likely will I lose my husband and be forced to go back to my parents? Difficult to tell since bio kids can be a deal breaker for lots of people. However, just because you divorce doesn't mean you have to leave the house. I've never been so scared in my life. Have you looked into counseling? Individual will be a good start. Besides that, you can't really do much than just sit your husband down and ask him about what's going on. How much did IVF cost and how likely is it to be successful? Depends on your age, your anatomy, your partner's sperm quality, where you live etc. Have you not talked to your fertility specialist? What were your results? If your spouse is deeply religious, IVF is technically not okay though. You need to address what you found with him. No one has a divorce business card in their pocket for no reason, so you have to sit him down and have that conversation. Don't just ignore it and get blindsided later. I know it seems counterintuitive, but if you think he's going to file for divorce, don't say anything to him about it. Get your own lawyer so you can be advised on how to handle your assets before he files. Tell him you found the card and ask what it was for. If he was considering it due to infertility you might want to take a good hard look at whether you want to stay. However, I'm wondering how your relationship is with your in-laws. Is it possible he blabbed to them and they gave him the card? IVF is possible and some insurances cover part of all? Start talking, and don't assume. Good luck. This exactly. Assuming someone didn't give him this business card unsolicited, the most likely way you get a business card is by meeting with the attorney in person. If he would go so far as to meet with a divorce attorney without giving his wife any hint about his feelings, it seems like there might be deeper problems with this marriage. If that's the case, getting out now would be better. Now for the next story. We are infertile and wife is refusing to adopt. I decided to get some suggestions anonymously, as we don't feel comfortable disclosing this with our friends slash family. We are both in our late 20s. We have tried to conceive for about a year and a half, before seeing the doctor. After a bunch of tests, we found out that she has something called premature ovarian failure. The way the doctor described it, basically, she is going to hit menopause in a few years. She doesn't have a lot of eggs left. We discussed a bunch of treatment options, and doctor told us without a donor, our chances of success with IVF are roughly 5 to 10%. If we use a donor, this goes up to around 80 to 90%. Also, each treatment is going to cost roughly 15 to 20,000 US dollars. While we have planned things well, that is still a lot of money. My wife proposed we ask her younger sister to donate. This is when our disagreement started. I do not feel comfortable with that for a number of reasons. 1. I see her as my younger sister. I know we won't be doing the deed, but just the thought of having a biological child with my sister is repulsive. 2. My wife is super close with her sister. I know our future child is going to have a lot of interactions with her aunt. I do not want the complication of aunt versus biological mom. 3. This is a big ask that can affect her life. Her future relationships are definitely going to be more complicated if she has a biological child. I have not asked her sister. I am not 100% sure if she has either. I explained this to her as clearly as I could. I then mentioned that I would prefer we rather adopt for a number of reasons. 1. As far as I am concerned, if it's not her egg then we aren't exactly passing her genes on fully. Yes, her sister has some of her genes, but it's not the same thing. 2. There are way too many kids out there without parents or families. 
I would rather do something good and take care of them, while fulfilling our desire for parenthood. My best friend is an orphan and I know the struggles he went through growing up. She is refusing, based on the fact that she wants to experience what a pregnancy feels like. What it feels like to have a baby in her. I do empathize with her. We had our first major fight in many years. We have discussed this often but have not been able to come to a consensus. The last time we discussed this, she basically told me, I need to get on board or she will take matters into her own hands. No idea what she means by that, but I am at my wit's end. I am looking for any advice or suggestions on how to approach this. Edit 1. I have discussed seeing a counselor with her. We found someone through the fertility clinic. She has good experience dealing with this specific situation. I booked three appointments so far, but my wife cancelled every single one. She doesn't believe in psychotherapy. Edit 2. To clarify, I am 100% supportive of her to try IVF with her own eggs. Since I was in high school, I have always wanted to own my own restaurant. I have been saving for it, day one of my first job. I have put aside quite a bit of money to eventually purchase a restaurant. I offered to spend every last cent of it for as many IVF treatments she needs to attempt pregnancy. I do not think it is possible for me to be more supportive than this. Edit 3. Thank you for so many helpful constructive comments. I have not heard of embryo adoption before so I am going to start looking into it. I will definitely get a second opinion regarding our options from another fertility clinic. Now for the top advice. You guys really need marriage counseling for something like this. The feelings involved are way too strong and primal for most couples to get through without a mediator. He tried, she doesn't believe in psychotherapy. Have you looked into embryo adoption? There are a lot of embryos left over from couples who have gone through IVF who are not planning to have more kids. Many couples don't want them to be destroyed and would rather give the embryos out for adoption. Your wife would still experience pregnancy and you don't have to find an egg donor. We'll check it out, thanks. A lot of people here are saying to just try IVF, since there's a possibility that it might work, but I don't think they're understanding the financial and physical toll that IVF takes, especially since it sounds like her odds of conceiving are low. I've been through it and it is rough. Spending 20k on just one IVF cycle that is likely going to crush her when it doesn't work out, is not the best solution. I know Reddit loves to recommend therapy, but in your case, I genuinely think it's your best move here. I think it's your best chance to get on the same page. Yeah. Part of me is afraid how devastated she will be if the IVF cycle doesn't work. I am going to start seeing a therapist, because I cannot handle this by myself. I hope she comes around to it. Update. I found out what she meant by taking matters into her own hands. I got a text from sister-in-law, her sister, wanting to meet with me in private. I went over to her apartment, and she basically started crying and saying sorry. My wife asked her to donate her eggs about three months ago. Sister-in-law did not want to, but eventually caved in and donated her eggs. Keep in mind, I did not donate any sperm. She was told to keep things to herself and not let anyone including me know. The IVF cycle failed. My wife decided she wanted to try a second round of IVF and asked sister-in-law to donate again. Sister-in-law doesn't want to, but is afraid to say that to my wife. She couldn't keep me in the dark and wanted support, telling my wife she does not want to donate her eggs. Wife basically threatened her that she will tell her family, how she isn't willing to support her own sister. We both have extended Italian families and this will get extremely out of control if others find out. I tried to console her as best as I could. I then went over to my best friend's house to calm myself down. Wife thinks I am staying over late playing some video games with him. I have way too many emotions going through me right now. I am angry and I feel horribly betrayed. I haven't confronted her. I am not sure what to do next. I am going to give it a few days to calm myself down before making any decisions. Now for the last story. My, 24 female, boyfriend, 28 male, told me to get a paternity test when I told him I was pregnant. I've been in a relationship with Nico for 3 years now, and we were discussing plans to move in together later this year and becoming engaged by next year. We were always very open and communicative when it came to our relationship and never had any big problems besides the petty argument here and there. I found out I was pregnant about a week ago, and was super scared because my career is just taking off now, and I'm not emotionally or financially ready to have a baby. I told Nico the day after I found out, since I was meeting him in person. I never thought he would be ecstatic or anything about the pregnancy, however he just looked at me and asked me to get a paternity test. 
I was shocked, and hurt that he would suggest I was sleeping with anyone else. It grew into a huge fight, where I asked him why he didn't trust me to even ask me that. He said he did trust me and didn't think I was a cheater, but he was not ready for a kid, and if there's a chance that it's not his kid, he wanted to be sure because he was not taking care of it if it's not his. This logic doesn't make any sense to me though, because if he trusted me, then why is there any doubt that the kid isn't his? I went to him to see what we can do together and get over it together, but instead I feel like I was just slapped. I'm not even sure if I want to be with him anymore due to this. Three years together, and this is what he thinks of me? Also, throughout the week, I've been having second thoughts on terminating the baby as well. I'm so scared I'll regret it later and miss my baby, but Nico keeps insisting on the test first before conversations about it, since he's not sure if it's his yet. Now for the top advice. These are two different topics. 1. Do you want to keep the baby? That's your decision. 2. Do you want Nico to be part of your life? The fact that he would immediately question paternity, makes me think he's looking to bolt. Do you want that uncertainty and unreliability in your life? He may be looking for a way out, or he may have read too many, I just found out that I've been raising some other man's child for the last 15 years, stories on this forum, or one like it. But it's probably the first case, I think. One thing you should consider, is if waiting for the paternity test will make it too late to get a termination. You're only 24. You don't feel ready for a kid, the father is being aggressively awful about not wanting the kid. It seems like keeping the baby would give a lot more cause for regret, than waiting for a better situation to have a wanted baby. Yes. I can't believe I didn't see this earlier. Terminations are easier the earlier they occur and paternity tests are expensive and may put OP in a precarious situation time-wise. Hi I'm just here to say, that when I got a termination, I knew immediately that I didn't want to carry the pregnancy to term and had absolutely no regrets with getting it. When you don't want to be pregnant, you won't suddenly regret it when you terminate. That's just what pro-birthers want you to think, so you doubt yourself. If that's what you want, you'll only feel immense relief. I just want to add, it may not be so straightforward for you either. I am vehemently pro-choice but my own procedure was not easy on me despite my having no doubt whatsoever what I wanted to do. I felt both relief and guilt. If you also find that your feelings are far more complex than you thought they would be, know that you aren't alone, and also know that doesn't mean that you made the wrong decision. Sometimes the best choice is a painful one. And that's it for this video guys, if you have thoughts to share, leave a comment below. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe if you like this content. I'll catch you in the next one. Good day everyone.